yesterday's proceedings, surprising testimony was elicited to the defense's cross-examination of Jack Bowen. Mr. Bowen, rather reluctantly, admitted to a connection with notorious crime boss Frank Smith that apparently goes back at least 30 years. At first, Mr. Bowen... So I wonder what startling revelations are in store for us this afternoon. We're not so startling. You mark my words, people. Frank Smith's grimy fingers are all over your daughter's murder. Good afternoon, Mr. Baldwin. Afternoon. Calling to your attention the early morning hours of the day Bradley Ward was murdered, you, Edward Quartermain, Frank Smith, and Jack Boland all participated in a meeting. Is that correct? Yes. And what was the purpose of this gathering? Edward wanted us to back off Bradley Ward. Back off? Now, what did he mean by that, Mr. Baldwin? But we were applying pressure to Dr. Ward. Blackmailing him, in other words. Objection sustained. Edward Quartermain was part of the plan to put pressure on Bradley Ward. Is, is that correct? Yes. An active and willing participant? Yes. So why the sudden turnaround? Well, I always suspected that Edward admired Bradley. It's rather difficult to put the squeeze on someone you admire. Is that what he said? Well, no. Then uh, why don't we stick to what actually happened as opposed to what you were reading into it? Now, did Edward Quartermain give a reason for you to ease off of Bradley Ward? You are an officer of the court, Mr. Baldwin. I'm sure I don't need to remind you what being under oath means. No, you don't, Mr. Schultz. Edward just said he would... he would handle Bradley personally. I see. <laughs> and did the three of you agree to back off, then? We did not. And why was that? We agreed that we had Bradley where we wanted him. He didn't want the extramarital affairs or Miss Quinlan's miscarriage to be made public knowledge for a number of reasons. Reasons which were more compelling to him than opposing our airport project. And how did Edward Quartermain react when you refused his request? Well, Edward's never taken kindly to opposition. I'm sure Bradley Ward could attest to that if he were able. Your Honor, that's outrageous, and I vehemently object. Sustained. The jury will disregard the DA's last statement, and it'll be stricken from the record. Shame on you, Mr. Schultz. I'm sorry, Your Honor. When Edward Quartermain left the meeting, you stayed on at Mr. Bowen's. For a while. And you were there when he received a phone call. Yes. And who was that call from? I have no knowledge. Well, subsequent to Dr. Ward's disappearance, did you come to learn anything more about that call? No, it was never discussed. Forgive me, Mr. Baldwin, but boy, I find that hard to believe. A, a group of businessmen band together in the middle of the night to discuss a man who was openly jeopardizing their financial interests. Edward Quartermain makes it clear to the group that he will handle the situation, and then Bradley Ward is never seen nor heard from again. Do you seriously expect the court to believe that the matter was never discussed? Well, of course we discussed Bradley's disappearance. But neither Edward nor Jack ever mentioned that phone call. And so. yet Jack Bolden told this court that it was in fact Edward Quartermain on the phone, and he said that the Bradley Ward situation had been resolved. Right, that may well be, but I assure you, Jack never said anything like that at the time. All right, then speaking from your personal knowledge, do you have any reason to believe that Jack Bolden would commit perjury? I'm sure I don't know. Well, I'm sure you have an opinion. You've known the man for 30 years, Mr. Baldwin. Gee, most marriages don't survive that long. Do you have any reason to doubt Mr. Boland's sworn testimony? Your Honor, will you please instruct the witness to answer the question? Answer the question, Mr. Baldwin. No, I don't. This is a mockery! Edward, I don't get Recess until further notice pending a report on the health of Mr. Quartermain. All right. I think we can get Mr. Baldwin? Too late, Baldwin? Please come. Oh, I can manage. Listen, I still think we ought to call him. No, ambulance. No. No, I forbid it. No. Grandfather, you're in no position to forbid anything. The hell I'm not. 
I'm the head of this family, and I will, I will not be wheeled into the emergency room. It's, it's undignified. So it's collapsing in court. No ambulance, and that's final. We save your breath, Steve. When his jaw gets set like that, there's no reasoning with him. Well, he'll have plenty of medical attention if someone check his vital signs in 30 minutes. His blood pressure and pulse are normal. We can assume it's a stress-related incident. And if it isn't, he's going to the emergency room kicking and screaming whether he likes it or not. I'd appreciate it if you'd all stop talking about me as if I weren't in the room. And I think I'm in a much better position to say how I feel than any of you. Take me home, if you must, but just stop yapping over me as if I were already dead. Is he gonna be all right? He seems to be rallying. So what do you think, a mild stroke? Maybe, maybe a mild case of consciousness. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go.